So this is JSON uh, introduction for low node coders. Um, this is for mo many people. Uh, JSON is their first uh, fun trip into coding uh, when they get into the Power Platform. So I kind of wanted to give people an uh, introduction to this so that when they do come across it in the wild, um, that it doesn't scare them away. So now I myself am Kat Schneider. A uh, little bit about me is I am a career switcher. I spent almost 15 years total in state government before I switched to tech. Um, I am now a senior software engineer this month at Hitachi Solutions. Um, I spent the last year and a half at a small MSP out in California uh, as a power platform developer, but at Hitachi, I'm still also doing power platform development with an entire group of people you all may know at some point in time. Um, I am just naturally curious. It's one of the things that some folks on my team have mentioned uh, because I keep asking lots and lots of questions about what is this? What is that? Why are we doing this? How is this done? Um, but this has kind of helped me in my transition into IT and, and learning a lot of these things that I was need I needed to know. But uh, self-taught coder, I went to the University of Google um, and learned coding that way, uh, usually through VBA and SQL. I kind of got started. But I love helping others learn data and learn code. Um, which is how I was awarded Microsoft MVP last year. So that's a, a, about me. But who's this JSON guy? What has he got to do with the Power Platform? Well, it's not this one. Turns out Jason or Jason himself doesn't really have much to do with this. I don't know if there was a Jason Jason on the development team. I'm sure he loved it, um, but. Jason is not a person. Jason is. I see you, Jason. Every time I talk about this, I know your struggle. Um, but Jason is JavaScript object notation. Just know JavaScript doesn't need to scare you away. Um, it's actually a, a very interesting language. But just to be clear, it's Jason, not Jason. Jason, code, Jason, person. It is a lightweight data change, data interchange format, meaning systems can talk back and forth with each other using this format. It's easy for humans to read and write, even if it does look scary at first. Um, but it's easy for machines to parse and then generate, especially in JavaScript. I almost said JSON a second. Um, JavaScript has, you know, the tools right there built in. And then it's made up of what are called key value pairs. So key value pair, what is this you ask? Well, a key is a field name. It's also known as a column, a heading, what have you. It's usually the, the name of whatever it is that all of the data falls under. Value is the value for that field. And I'll, I'll refer to it as a field from here on out. Um, just to not confuse people, but that key is a column. It is a heading, just, just to be clear. This here is a key value pair. These curly brackets around key values are actually what make up this JSON structure. Um, and this is technically a correct JSON uh, key value pair. But let's say if you've ever used a table in Excel or Access, you might be familiar with this. This here, this first one, this is a record. This is that same record across the top. This is that second record. This is that third record. But to make this a table, we throw in some square brackets around those curly bracketed records. So um, data types. This is the thing that I, I'd get on um, this is probably my most passionate piece of information is data types, just understanding your data. 
and how it's working. That's that's going to be your biggest helper when you're trying to get into the Power Platform. If you understand your data, then it's going to make building an app or using Power Automate a lot easier. But your data types, you have blanks or nulls, um, booleans, which are true falses, and numbers, which can be integers. They can be positive, negative. They can be decimals. They can be scientific notation, what have you. The blanks, booleans, and numbers do not need quotes around the value of the key value pair. But strings, all strings need quotes. Um, dates are actually considered a string. So anything that is not a blank, boolean, or number is going to be a string in the eyes of your, your data systems. Um, but there's two other data types that you need to be aware of. It's objects and arrays. Objects use curly brackets. So from that table previously, that those curly brackets around the, the information, that's what makes it an object. Arrays, they use square brackets. Throw some square brackets around a bunch of objects with curly brackets that are all separated by commas, you now have an array of objects. It's the same thing as a record and a table of words. But let's get some information about it being used in Power Apps. There is the JSON function. Um, when you type in the JSON function, it's going to ask JSON format. If you're not sure which one to use, go ahead and use that ignore unsupported types. That's usually going to filter out your um, image files, anything that's like base64, uh, any files basically. But compact just takes out a bunch of extra spacing, ignore binary data. That is also going to be some um, file types. But unsupported types kind of just gets rid of anything that the system has trouble with. Um, data includes that stuff that the system may have trouble with. And indent for is basically giving four spaces to give it a nice pretty layout. And I'll show you in a second what that looks like. Parse JSON is the newest function in um, Power Apps, and it requires a string of data. Now, the difference between JSON function and the parse JSON function is it JSON requires the data to be formatted as data. So whether it's coming from a SharePoint site, it's coming from a collection, uh, what, have, what have you, it requires that data in the data formats. Parse JSON requires it as a string of data. Um, this here is a string of data. We've got individual single quotes around the titles of our fields, our key values. Um, because these are numbers for our values, we don't have quotes. But on the outside, it's double quoted. Fun fact, if you're trying to use double quotes within Power Apps, you need to double up your single quote or your double quotes. So if instead of a single quote here, I can put double quotes and that will allow the system to understand what I'm doing. But this here is the exact same thing. This is actually a version of indent for. So if you were to use indent for, you would get an output that is similar to this. Um, but that parse JSON function itself, it has to be wrapped inside a for all of some sort. It could be a with if it's just a single record. Uh, but you do have to actually tell the system what the record is supposed to be. So because my ID, my account, and my report numbers, they're all numbers, I have to use the value function in here wrapped around each of my records. And then I wanted to add another uh, field in here called counts and I can use that value as or the value of the ID as a way to go in there and, and grab some information. So parse JSON needs that string. It needs to be formatted as a string. JSON needs to be formatted as data. But here's a quick uh, introduction or video that I recorded a while ago. Um, this is a bunch of JSON that I got from the user record that I pushed into Power Apps inside of, or Power Automate from Power Apps. Inside of Power Automate, I turned that JSON string into an HTML table. 
and then pushed the string of that HTML table back into PowerPoints, where I was able to then parse it using some regex. This was before parse JSON. And then it basically pulls each of those individual items into a gallery that I can then manipulate this information, edit it, save it back into the, the system if needed. Now, in Power Automate, some parse JSON action, it's pretty much the chef's kiss here. When I don't know what the schema is of my data, and the schema is the actual fields and the, the values and how they're all, all set up, I can use parse JSON and in my schema field, put in two curly brackets, an open and a closed curly bracket. That's the minimum required to get parse JSON to work. So then I can run whatever it is that I need to run, get output from that parse JSON, and then I can come back into my flow and click generate from sample and paste that set of records back into that sample to generate that schema. Um, but this also allows you, this parse JSON, allows you to use all of this information as dynamic content later. Just know that if you use these curly braces, you will not be able to get that uh, dynamic content later. You have to get, you have to provide a schema in order for that dynamic content to work. Now, there's any number of reasons why you, you have or you need to use this. This is an HTTP request that was to SharePoint. This one is a compose that was generated from a bookings request. And this one is trying to get the apps as an admin for what's going on in the system. So that's pretty much it. Um, but you will start to see JSON everywhere after this. After you start to see it the first time, it's been literally everywhere. Um, but the biggest help I have for you is the JSON uh, tutorial from W3 Schools. It is fantastic. It breaks it down nice and easy, gives you exercises if you really wanted to go through that, and kind of talks about the different data types and formats. Other one uh, is a couple of community calls. These were the two community calls that I've done previously, September and June. September, I had talked about the parse JSON, so there's a little bit of additional detail in that call. And then in June of last year, I did a Power Automate tutorial um, talking about how to how to break down the outputs from Power Automate actions, especially those that give you multiple records and need one. So these are my details, and that is all I have for you. Thank you.